Welcome to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, the number one podcast and resource for black entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful, sustainable businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the worldwide black community by building and supporting black owned businesses. If you're currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, you're invited to join us each and every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family and get ready to elevate your entrepreneur IQ. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 434. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another outstanding and informative show in store for you. Today's show topic is how to get the power to walk away from the table, how to get the power to walk away from the table. Now, as entrepreneurs, many times we make deals that really may not be in our best interest because we don't want to miss out on an opportunity or a perceived opportunity. But all opportunities aren't good opportunities. And the ability to walk away from the table is your biggest advantage when you negotiate. Remember that the ability to walk away from the table when you negotiate is your biggest advantage. And today we're going to talk about how you get that power to walk away from the table. And I'm going to give you some real life examples and actually a case study of what's going on with one of my businesses right now of how I'm creating a situation where I'll be able to walk away from the table. Now, before we get to today's show, I just want to share a few things with the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family. First and foremost, I want to welcome all first time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family. Please stick around until the end of today's broadcast and I'm going to share all of my contact information and resource links such as the link to my latest book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses, two platforms I've created to help circulate dollars in the worldwide black community, BeSmartBuyBlack.com and HireBlackFreelancers.com. And also my BEBAcademy.com, which is an online learning portal. Make sure you get your free three days access to BEBAcademy.com. This is an online learning portal that has all types of resources to help you launch, build, and grow a successful, sustainable business. So go to BEBAcademy.com, get three days free access. We have resources such as online courses, uh, master classes, PDF downloads, and training. So make sure you take advantage of that today. BEBacademy.com, three days free access to everything behind the portal or in the portal. Now, let's get ready for today's show how to get the power to walk away from the table. So, how many times have you guys done a deal or created a partnership or made moves with your business that you instantaneously regret? You know, uh, I'm going to raise my hand because I've done this on numerous occasions. So, I've been there and done that. So what we're going to talk about on today's show is I'm going to give you some tips to help avoid these types of situations and keep your business healthy. Because many times when we make these decisions, then it actually negatively affects our business and we're not as healthy as we should be. So I'm going to give you some real life examples and I'm going to give you a case study of what I'm doing right now with one of my brands, Hell Yeah Hot Sauce. But the ability, guys, to walk away from the table meaning you don't need that deal. So when you're desperate, what happens is we take almost anything that's thrown at us. And we're going to talk about how do you get the power to walk away from the table. So let's be clear. The reason that you're probably at the table is that you want something or you feel that your business needs something. All right. So what do you want or what do you need? There's usually a couple of things that you want or need to grow your business. Number one, You probably need money to grow or start your business. So many times when we go in negotiations with investors or partners, it's about the money. And one tip I will give you guys, when you start your business, do not undersell yourself. So you may need $20,000 for a business and somebody comes to you and says, you know what, I'm going to give you 10 grand. And then you give them 50% of the business. Now, in the short term thinking and equity wise, that makes a lot of sense. But in a long-term vision, 
you don't want to give up a whole bunch of equity in your business for a small dollar amount. Now, you never know what that business is going to turn into. It may turn into a, a 10, 20 million dollar business and you gave up 50 percent because somebody gave you ten thousand dollars to start your business. OK, or to help you start your business. So be very careful with the equity that you give away in your business as a side note. So what we're talking about, how do you get the power to walk away from the table? And many times you want something or you feel you need something to start or be successful in your business. So usually it's money to grow or start your business. You either need more sales. So it could be a partnership with joint venture to help grow sales. It could be more visibility to increase your brand recognition. It could be increased distribution to get more sales. And the last thing it is, is better profitability, being able to control your production. So most times when we go to the table, it's going to fall into one of these three type areas of why you want this deal. OK, so it's going to be money to grow or start your business. You need more sales or you need to create better profitability or better margins. And so once again, you have to be very careful when you go to the table. And I always say this in, 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 in the podcast and also when I'm talking to friends, power recognizes power. So when you come to the table in a position of power, the other side recognizes that. When you come to the table in a position of weakness, the other side recognizes that too. So one of the things that in terms of advertising on my podcast, right? So I started taking outside advertising, but I let people know I don't need your advertising dollars. If you're not comfortable with what I say and the way the show goes, guess what? Then don't do business with me. Because I don't need your money. I'm in a position to walk away from the table. And I've walked away from hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years for different advertisers because they didn't align with what I wanted to project on Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. And today's show, guys, is going to be a little bit shorter than normal. Uh, I'm traveling this weekend uh, for business. But what we're talking about, guys, is how to get the power to walk away from the table. And I'm going to give you some tips and I'm also going to give you a real life case study. And so most times when we come to the table, we're either looking for money to grow your or start your business. We're looking to create more sales with some types of marketing, be it partnerships, more visibility, increased distribution or whatever. Or you're looking for better profitability. Uh, say you need to control your production. But there's always a reason that you're at the table and it's because you want something now. What happens if it's a scenario where you don't want anything or you don't need anything? That's the scenario where you need to be if you're going to have that power to walk away from the table. Now, once again, not every deal is a good deal. And just because somebody throws something in your face doesn't mean that it's good. I'll give you a real life example. and I'm going to give you several today. Um, I got uh, uh, approached by a company. I'm not going to say the name that is uh, headed by a couple of Hollywood stars and they're creating a TV or an online television network and they wanted me to produce my Black Entrepreneur Blueprint podcast in video, uh, one hour shows for um, a whole year. Now, what they said was, we don't exactly know how the monetation, monetization is gonna look, but you'll participate. They sent me this big long contract have my attorney look it over and long story short, they were going to have me do another hour show, which was going to be different from this show, even though it's still black entrepreneur blueprint, but they wanted different content and they weren't sure what they were going to pay me. And my thing is this, I don't, you know, we can always use more money, but I'm not going to go into a situation or a deal and commit to creating another online show, an hour video show, each week and i don't know what i'm going to make now they're saying oh well we can have rev, rev share and all of that good stuff and you uh have the ability to make this amount of money but once again it's an unproven product and i don't necessarily want to go out and do that because i don't know what i'm going to get so i have the ability to walk away from the table i said thank you very much i appreciate it but no thank you and I've done that with tons of different people coming to me to create content. If it doesn't fit into what I'm doing, I always talk about guys building your business around your lifestyle, not your lifestyle around your business. 
and there's certain uh, things that are not negotiable for me, certain time factors and things that I need to, to focus with my family or work on projects or things that are super important to me. And so having the ability and the income to say, you know what, this is nice, but it doesn't fit into what I'm trying to do right now. Thanks for the opportunity. Maybe we can get together at another time. So what is the answer for you to create the power to walk away from the table? How can you get that power? And the answer is you can walk away from the table when you don't need anyone to help you do those three things that I told you. Number one, if you don't need help with money to grow your business, you have the power to walk away from the table. If you don't need help with more sales, you have the power to walk away from the table. If you don't need the help with better profitability, you have the power to walk away from the table. So if you can master and manage those three things, then you're really not in want of anything else. Now, there's certain deals that may fit your criteria that can help you exponentially grow your business, but you're not pressed to take them if it doesn't fit what your criteria is. So let's talk about this. How do you do this? How do you create the position where you have the power to walk away from the table? And the answer simply, guys, is vertical integration, vertical integration. And I talk about controlling the vertical. And I'm going to give you a real life example of what I'm dealing with right now with my hell yeah hot sauce. But let me break down vertical integration for you. So according to uh, Webster's Dictionary, vertical integration involves acquiring or developing one or more important parts of a company's production process or supply chain. Vertical integration involves acquiring or developing one or more important parts of a company's production process or supply chain. Vertical integration helps a company reduce cost across different parts of its production process. It creates tighter quality control and guarantees a better flow and control of information across the supply chain. So vertical integration allows you to control more and become more profitable where you're not at the behest of anybody else. So let's look at a couple of examples that I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Netflix, for example, right? So Netflix shifted from licensing shows. Remember, when Netflix st first started, all they were doing were licensing movies and stuff like that from the major studios. Now what they've done is they started producing their own digital content. So now instead of getting or relying on the major motion picture studios for their content, they're creating their own content and they're controlling their vertical. So now they're doing the production and the distribution. So if they have an issue with uh, Warner Brothers or whatever and Warner Brothers doesn't want to sell them or license them their content, then guess what? They're ass out, right? So what they decided to do was, hey, let me not be beholden to all these other uh, production facilities or these movie companies. Let's create our own so we don't have to rely on them. And if the deal makes sense, though, we'll do a deal with Warner Brothers or somebody else. That's the power of controlling the vertical, creating the product and distributing your own product. Let's look at Disney. OK. So uh, Disney has pursued a vertical integration by operating more than 300 retail stores that sell merchandise based on Disney's characters and movies. So I remember when my kids were little, there used to be a Disney store in the mall. And so during Halloween or whatever, we go and we buy the Disney characters or the, the dolls or whatever it was. So Disney said, you know what? I'm going to create my own retail distribution. We, we contract out the manufacturing and instead of just selling our Disney products and other retailers, big box retailers, we're going to create our own distribution and basically we're going to control that. So that's another example. You, you look at, speaking of the mall, look at Apple, right? Now, Apple is sold, you know, through all your major uh, cell phone carriers. But if you go into any major mall in the United States, they're going to have an Apple store, right? So Apple has their products manufactured and they also have the distribution through the, uh, their own Apple stores. I know some Apple stores are so crazy during the holidays. They, they got cops in there. Right. So there's a mall in Delaware, Christiana Mall, that's right outside of Philly. Man, that Apple store during the holidays is crazy. I got a friend of mine that actually is a uh, state trooper and he does part time work over the holidays 
because that Apple store is so crazy. So when the new phones come out, iPhone 14 or whatever, whenever they drop something new, they have their own distribution through the stores. I've even seen some Microsoft stores. Now, obviously, they're not doing as well, but I've been in malls with their Microsoft stores, too. So they want to go direct and control the retail distribution in addition to being sold in other stores. So what we have to remember, guys, is when you're able to control these three things, you, you want to be able to control, number one, the money to grow your business. You want to be able to create more sales and you want better profitability. And in order to do that, vertical integration is the key. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, you know, I don't have a physical product that I create. That's fine. If you have a digital product or a service you can still implement the the concept of vertical integration. So if you sell insurance, right, do you sell it through uh, different agents or brokers or do you sell it direct to the consumer? The closer you can get to the consumer and control the whole process, the better off you're going to be. So let's take a look at something I'm dealing with right now with my Hell Yeah Hot Sauce, right? So if you guys love uh, high-end gourmet hot sauce, yeah, this is a shameless plug. Make sure you go to hellyeahhotsauce.com. Check it out. H-E-L-L-Y-E-H hotsauce.com. We have some great holiday uh, packages and promos, three packs, and uh, you can check it out. Great product. Like I said, um, it's something that we've been working on for a while. But let me just tell you what's going on right now with Hell Yeah Hot Sauce and how I'm trying to create the concept of of being able to walk away from the table. I actually have already, but here's what's going on. So my goal right now is I want to get into some big box retail stores, not Walmart because mine is a higher end product. Walmart products are, you know, obviously a uh, race to the bottom in terms of prices. So my, my avatar doesn't, isn't going to look for my type of premium gourmet hot sauce in Walmart. So I want to get into big box retailers like Target and some other stores. The problem is, as I negotiate with a lot of these companies, is many of the big box stores want me to have a track record in other big box stores or other retail locations. And so it's like, okay, if you're not going to give me a chance, how am I going to show you, <laughs> right? So it's, it's, it's the chicken or the egg. How am I going to do it if nobody's giving me an opportunity? So the solution is to control the vertical from production, distribution to retail so I can show them that, yes, I'm a viable retail product. I just want to give you this side story real quick before I get back to the Hell Yeah Hot Sauce because it pertains to the same concept. So when I did BEB in L.A. with my man Melvin Graham from Black Business Los Angeles, uh, his wife came up and asked a question when we had a Q&A session and she said, um, how do we get a seat at the table if we want to distribute our film through, say, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu and some of these other different uh, platforms? And my response was this. I said, um, when you went to these platforms, what did they tell you? And she basically said that they told us that, um, you know, they're looking for. Uh, a, B, C, and D. And I said, okay. I said, so what you need to do is you need to create A, B, C, and D. So if you come to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and you've already had 100,000 downloads, you have a database of 500,000 people, then they're going to look at you because you've created your own table. So now, not just these platforms, but probably some other platforms are going to be able to or want to be uh, be able to do business with you because you've created something. So sometimes we need to find out what atmosphere or conditions we need to create so other people will come to the table with us and partner with us. And I say that to say this. And so with Hell Yeah Hot Sauce, once again, the goal is to get in the big box retail stores. The problem is many of these stores, once again, they want me to have a track record with other big box stores. And I'm like, if nobody's giving me a chance, how do I do that? The solution is to control the vertical from production, distribution to retail sales. So how am I working to do this right now? The first thing that I'm doing or looking to do is control my production. OK, to save money on a per unit cost. What I found out was 
a lot of these major hot sauce companies, obviously, because they have the resources and the production facilities, are able to sell to these big box stores at a lower cost. So the first thing in terms of controlling the vertical, how can I control my production? So what I currently do right now is I've created my formulas for my hot sauce and I go to what's called a co-packer. And I have three co-packers that produce my formulations and bottle, you know, uh, of hot sauce and they bottle them and put my, my labels on them. So I created it. They've actually taken the formula and the recipe and they produce it for me because I'm not in my kitchen or in some type of warehouse creating the actual product. OK, because it's too much. I can't handle that production amount. So my first thing I want to do is control my production. So I want to start by bringing my manufacturing in-house in stages. Now, I don't want to start out with all of these vats and producing hot sauce. The first thing I want to do is create a filling and bottling facility. So what I'll do is I'll have my hot sauce produced in batch in, in major batches. They call them barrels of vats and I'll have it shipped to my facility and then I'll do the bottling and filling. OK, so this way I can cut down on the cost because when I buy the bottles directly in volume and I buy uh, the filling machine and I have the labeling there, I can actually save close to 30 percent per unit. That's stage number one. So I'm not going to bring in the production. I'm going to bring in the bottling and the filling of the hot sauce into the bottles. Stage number two would be to purchase my own hot sauce manufacturing facility. So that's how number one, I'll control the production and save me on a per unit cost. Number two, I'm going to control retail distribution. And remember, we're talking about controlling the vertical. So I'm in talks right now. I want to increase profits by cutting out the middleman just like how uh, Apple does when they sell their phones through their Apple stores, right? So I want to cut out the middleman and, uh, and other retailers where I have to sell wholesale. So for example, just to give you an idea, if I sell a bottle of hot sauce for $10 retail, if I sold it wholesale, I'd probably sell it for $5. So I'm only making $5, but if I have my own retail distribution, I'm selling it for ten dollars. OK, so right now I'm currently working with several malls and other retail locations to open my own hell yeah hot sauce stores. Now, the stores aren't just going to sell hot sauce. They're going to sell my spices and seasonings. I have a brand of barbecue sauces under the hell yeah brand coming out. Also, I got some hot chips, popcorn and other hell yeah branded products. So I want to control my retail distribution so now I can prove to the big box retailers, guess what? I got my own distribution, just like the Disney stores do, right? Now, that's part two. The third part of the plan is create demand so other retailers will want to carry the product, okay? So now I've answered all the big box store questions about having a track record selling retail. This retail brand also gives visibility and enhances my online sales, right? So if you're in a mall or a retail location and you keep seeing these hell yeah hot sauce stores up, it's going to increase visibility, right? So that visibility is going to increase curiosity and people will go to the website and I'll gain more traction. So the question is, once again, how do I get the power to walk away from the table? And the answer is you have to make yourself desirable. OK, you need to be so strong that you don't need the deal. And so. How I do this is in a three pronged attack. I control my production for the hot sauce. I control my own retail distribution and I create create a demand. So other retailers will want to carry my product. So now I have the power to walk away from the table if the deal doesn't make sense to me. OK, so when you don't need the deal, guys, that is when you're in control and vertical integration is the key. The more you can control guys, the better. So the more the process So if it's a physical product, if you can control manufacturing and distribution, then you're controlling the vertical. If it's a digital product or service, being able to go direct to consumer, being able to have that control. That's how you're able to walk away from the table when you don't need somebody. Once again, 
with Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, and I've had so many different advertisers or prospective advertisers come to me, but they don't align with what my 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 brand is. We're about building and supporting black owned businesses. We're about positivity. We're, we're about doing things, making a difference, being impactful. And so if an advertiser that comes to me doesn't align with me in, in what my, my goals and my mission is, guess what? I'm not going to I'm not going to put them on the platform. Now, I'm not making the money, but guess what? I'm in the position where I don't need the money from this. Now, we always need money, and I'm not just going to turn away money just to turn away money. But I'm in the position of I can walk away from the table because I have other sources of income opposed to just Black Entrepreneur Blueprint and the ecosystem. So this is a position that every entrepreneur should strive to get in. The ability to walk away from deals when deals aren't good. All deals aren't good deals. All partnerships aren't good partnerships. All money isn't good money. So when it comes to partnerships, you know, I talk about this on the show. You got to make sure that you and your partner or partners are equally yoked. If your objective is to build a business, not take any money out of the business for six months, 12 months, whatever, and build. And your partner's idea is, yeah, we're going to take money out every month because I got to live. That means you're not equally yoked. OK, you need to be able to walk away from the table. And most people make bad decisions when they're desperate. OK, so you need to think things through. Everything has consequences and repercussions. Right. So any type of deal or any any type of uh, arrangement that you're going to get into, there's things that come with that. Many moon ago, uh, when I had my condom business, uh, I got approached by some some underworld figures that wanted to back us. Right. <laughs> and uh, I was like, yo, man, you know, I told my partner, I'm like, yo, bro, this is, we get in bed with these cats. You know, hey, it's, it's, it's going to be ugly. So we needed the money to grow our business, but we understood what we were dealing with and we we, we respectfully declined it. OK, and these were some heavyweight cats. These were some powerful uh, underworld cats that was, was serious about backing our business. But we didn't do that. OK, so we had the ability, the power to walk away from the table. I've had alcohol brands that have reached out to me to advertise on the platform. My cousin has a, a high end cognac right now. I'm not uh, against drinking. You know, I like my bourbon. I like my beer when watching my sports or whatever. So I'm not opposed to that. But once again, this platform is about life, not death. So I'm not going to promote anything that 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 promotes death or negativity. And that's just my personal opinion when it comes to that. You know, anything in moderation is cool. So like I said, I drink. So it's not that I don't drink, but I'm not going to put that on the platform. And I have the ability to walk away from that deal. Because I don't need it. I have the power. And so you want to be able to create a a situation, guys, where you don't need anything. You may want it, but you don't need to do something unless it makes a lot of sense for your business. And the way to do that is vertical integration, if possible, in your business. And if you can't create vertical integration because you don't have a physical product, direct to consumer. The closer you can get to your end customer the better. Let me just share my uh, resource information, guys, and contact information before we get to the last quarter of the show. Uh, Once again, I'm going to direct everybody to the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. All of my resource links, online courses, everything is on the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. If you're lazy, just type in bebconnect. Dot com bebconnect.com is going to take you right to the website. So I'm going to breeze through this real quick, guys. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the show, my latest book, A New Black Wall Street, is out. Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. You can go to the website to check it out. All my online courses, bebacademy.com is on the website. Brandbuilderacademy.com. If you're looking to build an e-commerce brand, physical products brand or digital products brand, Also, my online course, Pinpoint and Monetize Your Genius. Your genius is the intersection of your passion and talent. Instead of chasing paper, guys, chase your purpose. This program, Pound for Pound, is one of the best out there. 
So the problem is most people don't know how to monetize their genius and that's what this program does. So it's all on the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Also guys, if you need to connect with me, anything long, hit me on my email, jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Facebook, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Twitter, jjones001. J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001. Instagram, I got two IG accounts. The first one is jjones for real. J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S, the number four. R-E-A-L. Second one is Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. YouTube. Make sure you go to YouTube. Type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Subscribe. I have additional content on YouTube that is not on the show. Clubhouse. Get at me at I am J Jones. LinkedIn. J Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Also, don't forget the newsletter, guys. All of the show notes and links of everything I talk about on all the shows are in the newsletter. So go to the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. On the bottom of each page, you'll either see newsletter or join us. And the newsletter comes out every Monday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with the latest show notes and links from the latest episodes. So make sure you guys sign up for the newsletter. If you are a first time listener, the show drops every Monday morning at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on all your major podcast platforms and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to right now. We love to have you and welcome to the BEB family. Now, let's get ready for the last quarter of the show. I forgot to tell you guys, too, this just came to mind when I was listing all my social media uh, contact information. My uh, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint uh, Instagram account got shut down for 48 hours because I guess I didn't uh, follow the terms of service. So when I talk about vertical integration and control, control is the key to your business or the success of your business. So remember, guys, in order to control your business, you need to be able to communicate with your audience. And so I say this all the time. Social media is a great place to communicate, but you do not control or own social media. Okay, so you want to start building your database with email addresses. And I know people like email. Yeah, but you use social media to build your database. Your database is the biggest asset of your business. And when you want to control the vertical, you're going to need to be able to control and contact your customer base. So if all of your customer base is on Instagram and you get shut down, guess what? You can't communicate with them. If it's on Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. So you need to make sure you have your database built up. They shut me down, I think, because of my last post. Why does every other ethnicity make money off of black folk? And they shut me down on blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. It's funny. I had to change it up on J. Jones for real. So they didn't shut that one down, too. So I just changed the wording a little bit. But once again, that was just a reminder that I don't own those platforms. So make sure when you're building your vertical integration that a part of that integration is being able to contact your customer base at any time. And you can do that through email. You can do that through newsletter. You can do that through a podcast, whatever. But you don't want to rely solely on social media. There's so many companies and there's several BEB family members that have lost their business because they got shut down or kicked off of a social media platform and now they can't communicate. So what we're talking about today, guys, I just wanted to share that with you is how to get the power to walk away from the table and vertical integration or being able to go directly to your consumer is the way to get the power to walk away from the table. Once again, most times when you start doing a deal or negotiating, you're looking for one of three things, money to grow to start your business, you want more sales, or you want better profitability. Vertical integration will solve all of those problems. And that's how you create the power to walk away from a deal. Remember guys, all money ain't good money. And all deals aren't good deals. So you have to be able to have a discernment to know and understand what's the best move for you to make But when we're desperate, that's usually when we make the wrong move. Now, before I close on out, guys, I say this each and every week because it's true. We get more and more downloads because of you, the BEB family. We couldn't do it without you guys. I appreciate you so much. 
Please continue to spread the word about the podcast, the new blackentrepreneurblueprint.com website. We want the website to be the resource for black entrepreneurs. Go there, make sure you hit the learn button, and we have all types of resources from scaling your business, mindset, strategy, e-commerce, marketing, finance, everything you need to grow your business. So make sure you go to blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, utilize that. Also, the ecosystem, all the online courses, the books, and everything else to help you elevate your entrepreneur IQ. Remember, guys, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us. It's about building an economic power base in the worldwide black community by building and supporting black-owned businesses. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace.